So I had a discussion yesterday with a patient about um, her questions around starting a GLP-1 agonist. And, um, you know, I thought the discussion was actually kind of applicable in, 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 in ways that went beyond her. So I thought I would kind of share this. Um, so, so the woman is, is, is in her early to mid 40s, um, very healthy, uh, very active, and, you know, by her estimation, probably 15 pounds overweight. Um, and has been working really, really hard through both exercise and nutrition, stop drinking alcohol, uh, really is eating quite little, um, and is really struggling to, to lose this, this, this last 15 pounds. Now, um, I long ago gave up on the idea of trying to solve weight management as a strategy. I, um, I've met people who can manipulate their weight quite easily, um, and I've met people who work just as hard and cannot manipulate their weight at all. Um, and I know that when you're in the camp of people who can do it easily, you always look at those who can't and you think it's some failure of willpower, and, and I have pretty strong feelings about that just simply not being the case. So um, we must accept that there are people with very different body types, and for some people, manipulating weight is, you know, as easy as changing your hair length and color, and for others, it's as difficult as changing your height. Um, so she she sort of asked me a few questions, and I think that the take home of this was that, look, I don't think it's worth going on one of these drugs if you're not willing to stay on them indefinitely. Most people are going to regain weight once they stop taking the drug. That's not true across the board. Um, and it might be the case that over time we're going to learn better and better ways for weight maintenance uh, following the, the removal of the drug. And I think the best case for that might be an individual who's otherwise not exercising um, and otherwise doesn't have great eating habits at the outset, but who uses the weight loss as a way to spur those new behaviors. I think that's an individual who might be able to come off the drug and then maintain a healthier diet and exercise program. But in the case of this woman, I, I was very blunt with her and I said, look, I think given how hard you are working right now, whatever forces, whatever gravity is, is pulling you in the direction of this excess weight, um, it's probably gonna come back if you stop. So the goal should be to find the minimum effective dose and then accept the fact that you're probably going to stay there. Um, she had some concerns about safety and I shared with her to the best of our knowledge, which of course I've discussed on a recent AMA, which is look, for all intents and purposes, these drug not, drugs not only look safe, um, it's possible that they may end up being even zero protective. Now that's a very bold statement and not a reason that I think anyone should take one of these drugs yet. Um, but, but nevertheless, um, you know, the skepticism that I had around the safety of these drugs in 2020 in 2021 um, has, based on the number of patients who have taken them for the duration that they have, uh, become, become more muted. Um, cost, of course, is a huge issue, and, and I think that that's something that everybody has to contend with, and, and therefore, um, you know, the hope is that over time, uh, the economics of these drugs on an out-of-pocket basis becomes more manageable. And of course, in the case of this woman, um, someone who just needs to lose 15 pounds without type 2 diabetes is not going to qualify for any sort of payment. There are, of course, um, programs out there that can, that can maybe lessen the burden. Um, but honestly, the biggest issue that she struggled with was, uh, and I, I found this very um, both sad but interesting, was she said she, she felt like a failure. She said, I feel like I'm a failure if I take this drug because why have I not been able to do this on my own? And so I guess to bring this um, somewhat rambling uh, discussion to an end, um, I don't think that's a fair assessment. I shared that with her and I think that, um, uh, I, I think that one should not discount the role that genetics play in body habitus. It is one of the most conserved traits genetically and as such, um, an individual who is genetically predisposed to be a certain shape, um, I think should take comfort in the fact that there is today a class of drugs that um, can, can, again, fight the gravitational pull um, of that. So anyway, for anyone listening who's thinking about this in the same way, hopefully this, this, this uh, framework and, and idea is a little bit helpful.